Good morning. It's a beautiful morning here in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Uh, I'm Hank Gieseke, president of the Avapai Tea Party, and we're pleased this morning to have Congressman Gosar with us, speaking about the new report that's just out with regards to Fast and Furious. So tell us about some of this new stuff that we're finding out. Well, thank you, Hank. Um, well, as everybody, the buzz around is, is that the attorney, or the inspector general, came forward with his report this week. Um, we received it on, on uh, Wednesday afternoon. It's roughly about 500 pages. And what it basically does a synopsis of is about 100,000 pages of, of uh, documents and 130 do interviews with individuals that most we have not been able to see. Hmm. To give you a kind of an idea, um, we've seen about 2,600 pages of those 100,000. So this is a viewpoint of, of the Inspector General's insight into what happened fast and furious hmm. uh, and, and nothing more than that. Okay. All right. Is it, is it showing us things now that we didn't realize before, even though it's been redacted to some degree? Absolutely. In fact, Main Street Media has tried to say, uh, you know, almost uh, uh, as soon as the report came out, that it exonerates the Attorney General, and it really doesn't. It okay. doesn't exonerate anybody. Um, in fact, one of the things that the Attorney General spoke about um, when we had him in front of, of Congress was that he reviewed the wire, the affidavits for the wiretaps and saw no involvement from the upper level justice departments as well as things that would cause alarm. Yet in this Inspector General's mm. report, they sounded the alarm that anybody that read the affidavits to the wiretaps mm. would have been alarmed and there was plenty of time for everybody to intercede. The second part is is, is the really the role, um, and, and the committee picked up on it, the role of Lanny Brewer, the Assistant Attorney General of the Criminal Division his oversight and knowledge and timeline. Um, all of these are still in, uh, in question because they mm. don't follow protocol. Okay, all right. And you were mentioning too that there's some difference in the timelines on these things? Absolutely, it going? still does not. And you know, even the Inspector General said it doesn't seem to impugn um, uh, or implicate uh, the Attorney General. However, timelines are off. Uh -huh. You know, when we saw the Attorney General in May of last year, he said he knew about Fast and Furious maybe a couple weeks earlier. Mm -hmm. And then the President's Univision uh, 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 video came forward that showed it in, in February. And then you find, we find out in question about Brian Terry and his death, and the very next day, the Attorney General asks for and emails three individuals for dictations about what happened, how this happened. And, and we know protocol. I mean, on our committee, we have Trey Gowdy, who is a prosecutor for ATF. Okay. We also have um, a Congressman Meehan, who was a former U.S. attorney. And when something happens of that magnitude, there is a full uh, discussion. Mm. There's, there's a forensic uh, cut down of every possible aspect. Okay. So this didn't go on, 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 uh, on unabated. Yeah. But the second part that I also brought in my testimony is, is that in, in January of last year, the end of January last year, Get, Congressman Giffords was shot, and everybody was making uh, questions in, instantaneously if one of these guns was used. Uh -huh. So there's problems with the timeline, and you know when we have attorney general that won't comply with the oversight of Congress, we got a problem. Absolutely, and this is what's showing up here on this aspect. Okay, where will, what will kind of be the next step in terms of what happens now? Now that this is out, well, we had a committee a committee hearing, and we actually interviewed um, the inspector general. There's a number of questions that will be submitted for the record that he has to go back and answer, and he's going to continue his uh, uh, onslaught of review. Um, there's a number of things. A couple of questions that I had to us is that. Um, um, once again, I chimed in with Lanny Brewer. Uh, Lanny Brewer knew much earlier than this. You know, for example, is is that they tried this report uh, um, correlates Operation Wide Receiver that was under the Bush administration, much smaller, but working with Mexico and ended in 2007 okay. with Fast and Furious. So they tried to dilute it. Um, Lanny Brewer actually opens and investigates. Uh, Operation Wide Receiver in 2007. So he sends somebody to open back up, and he knows the Frank. A failure of it, and oh. yet still allows it to go forward. Lanny Brewer's got to go, but he's also got to be held ac in, in, uh, accountable for his actions. Yeah. Number two is is when I make a statement in front of Congress, a lot of my staff, um, when I do my outline and my staff fills in, they do a background check and a fact check. And if there's something I've put in there, they will say, hey, this is not factual, can't do that. I asked a question and I want documentation for sure. everybody that re reviewed the testimony of anybody, whether it be the Attorney General, Lanny Brewer, 
uh, anybody within the Department of Justice, if somebody, an attorney, reviewing their testimony alerted them to false and misleading testimony in front of Congress. Yeah. When was it, how was it, and who was it delivered to? I want that dictation and I will be submitting that, those uh, questions to uh, the Inspector General for further review. Absolutely. And you were mentioning too, I guess there's kind of these inline attorneys that all the way down through that have right. kind of been held back and, and claimed that, well, we can't talk to them? We've been, we've been not allowed to see much of anything, Hank. Okay. Um, you know, out of this 100,000 pages, we've maybe 2,600 uh, that's not fully redacted and, yeah. and duplicative. Um, we've barely uh, haven't seen many of the 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 witnesses of the inline attorneys. So you know we actually got another dump of 300 pages. You know at the same time this was. And isn't it interesting that we have an administration that's figured out that we'll dump this right at the last minute when Congress is getting out, so that there's not a lot of scrutiny, so that they can play this. Right. I think the second part that should be alarming to mm -hmm. people is this week um, a FOIA request that was put in eight months ago. Um, by the Daily Caller um, was answered, and basically it shows that the AT or that the Department of Justice was pre-leaking information to a company or uh, a nonprofit called Media Matters. Okay, and they were telling uh, them how to twist the information in front of the spotlight, in front of the news agencies, in front of the public. Yeah. this is an outrage. Yeah, this is an absolutely. absolute outrage. Yeah. There should be an investigation into Media Matters and to the association with the Department of Justice. They should have their tax exempt status revoked. Uh, we need to have a full complacent or a full oversight uh, and accountability of this egregious action of of, of the Department. Justice. Yeah, because it's obviously purposeful. I mean, obviously something's going on here. I mean, you know, people don't go to this trouble if there isn't some, you know, if there's a lot of smoke, there's some fire. Absolutely. Kind of thing. Yeah. And Hank, you know, um, look what we'd have to, you know, I, I was on Geraldo Rivera yesterday on his radio okay. show and he tried to say, you know, that this is the first attorney, a black attorney general you know, in, in America and this mm -hmm. looks like a black. It has nothing to do yeah. with race. This has to do with the consequences of law because once somebody excuses themselves from scrutiny of the law, we've now lost our, our country. Sure. Because justice is nothing that. Is, is she's blindfolded. She's holding a set of scales. Exactly. She's weighing the information and we need to have that access. We're an equal branch of government to have our oversight. And once justice is, gets a determination, she has the sword to, uh, to adjudicate or uh, uh, evolve that quickly. Exactly. We have got to keep to that, that format. And, and Mr. Holder is nothing more than a, another citizen that has to be held accountable to law. In fact, even higher scrutiny to the law because he's in charge and he's a steward of our of our Constitution. Absolutely. Well, and to my mind, it has a bigger implication. <clears throat> it's no wonder that the people have lo losing confidence in the government in general because we see here's the Justice Department that's supposed to be, you know, the the watcher of all these kind of things, doing things that it shouldn't. I mean, so it's absolutely it, they it, should it's be at the basic fabric of our country. It is. Um, it, the Justice Department should be upholding the rule of law that's on the books. If you don't like the, the, that, that law, change the law. Right. But this Attorney General has picked and choose winners, just like the administration. Yeah. And, and it's been interesting, the symbiotic relationship they've worked. We've never seen this before. Mm. This is a total violation and should be an outrage to the American citizen. And we need to make some changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. What will be the... What will be the next step now in terms of this? Will the committee meet again? Or? We will. The, the, the problem is is that um, we're off until um, the lame duck. lame duck. So a lot of us are going to be digesting this. We okay. hopefully will get more information. Um, you know, uh, Congressman Issa always has tricks up his sleeve, so you never know. But, Good. you know, this is a full review. We've barely got a chance to do speed reading on yeah. this. All of us spend, you know, the midnight hours sure. to try to read this and get our questions. But there's so much more, and that's why I brought this back. Um, so. I could go back through that with a fine tooth comb, and we're happy to share it with anybody. Good. Well, we appreciate all that you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much Anna. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it.